Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant, and welcome back to the channel. We are at a very interesting time in FIFA right now. We are in between Team of the Year and Team of the Season. This is usually the time of the FIFA cycle that people say, ah, FIFA's dead, right? Nothing's going on in this game. Yeah, we have good promos like Road to the Final, Foot Birthday. Last year we had Foot Fantasy, right? And Foot Captains. This year we're going to have some great promos as well. But this is kind of like the dead kind of the year on FIFA, as people will call it. But if you're looking to make coins on FIFA, this is like literally the best time of the year and I want to talk to you in this video why that is the case and also talk through some coin making methods whatever budget you're on whether you have like 10,000 coins or less than that or if you have a million coins plus we're going to talk about again a lot of trading methods that have maybe worked all year long but they're going to work even better in these next couple of months on this game so if you're excited for today's video hit the thumbs up and if you're new around here hit that subscribe button but let's talk about why is it really a great time to make coins on this game in these next couple of months let me just show you what happened last year to me when i was trading on my account so this is a picture a screenshot of one of my videos last year right around team of the season literally this was during community tots the first week of team of the season and I had 17.8, almost basically just below 20 million coins. This was not all my coins liquid at the time, but just about 20 million coins just a few months before that, where we are like right now during the end of Future Stars, heading into Road to the Final, I had about 5 million coins. I went from 5 million coins almost to 20 mil in that time period because there was just a great opportunity to trade. And that's why I'm just showing you this is the time every year where my coin balance after team of the year is a little bit down from where it was because we do a lot of packs, but always from team of the year until team of the season, it is like the best time to trade in this game. And there's many reasons why that is the case. But I just kind of wanted to show you that because my coin balance always explodes every single year because all I do is the same trading methods that I have done before. It's just so many more of them work. And once you get more and more coins, it just kind of compiles and it's kind of compounding. But the reasons why the market's going to be a lot better for the next couple of months in terms of trading is because there's a lot less competition. That's probably the number one thing that is going to make trading on this game a little bit easier is there's less people vying for all these cards on the market because there's a little bit less hype for the game. And that means when there's less competition you're getting that you know snipe price or you're getting that good price where maybe there's less eyes and less people trying to trade in the first place so right now is a great time to have a motivation to trade even if you're not even like saying i need coins uh for this promo like maybe i need it for like the next promo or maybe i'm still like trying to stock up coins for tots it's a great time to be motivated to trade on this game just because of that. So less competition, but then also when they drop these promos, like we're heading into Road to the Final right now, um, you know, they're going. there's going to be less supply most times uh, on the cards that are in packs because there are less people opening packs. And, you know, that just means there are going to be less cards on the market, which means they are more rare. And of course, they are better to trade with if you're on higher budgets. So, you know, rarity is key, right? That's one of the things we always look for. So it just kind of all of those things combined make this time of the year an absolutely incredible time to make coins on this game. Um, and you, you might be like, Nate, doesn't it mean actually that since the market's more dead that like prices drop and, you know, prices are going down and it's harder to make coins. It's actually the exact opposite. Now, prices will be dropping for sure, right? This is the normal kind of uh, graph that we expect on prices during this period. Like take a look at Future Stars Fair and Torres last year. He started off at a million coins. And of course, there's a lot of fluctuations in here, but the market is going to do this during this kind of the second half of the year between team of the year and team of the season. The market is going to drop off during this period on most cards, right? Most cards like this, there's going to be new promos coming out. Prices will go down. That's how all cards react in this game anyway. But uh, again, in, in that big, you know, just drop off that he has, I flipped this card so many times inside of a one or two day window where I would buy it like here and it would go up, you know, and then I would sell it or maybe I buy it here and then it would go up, then I would sell it or, you know, all sorts of trading opportunities with these more rare cards because there are just less people on the game and there's less competition. So that's why this time on the game is so, so great to make coins in uh, because nobody else is doing it, right? Less people are doing it. And that means if you're doing it, you're getting the profits that you don't have to share with other people. And the content's still rolling on this game, right? What do we know about EA and FIFA? The content is not going to stop. So with that being said, 
let's talk about some specific trading methods. And again, like I said at the beginning, we're not necessarily going to change up all of the methods that we've been doing. There are some new ones now that have kind of surfaced based off of the content that we have. But if let's really quick if, say if you're on like 10,000 coins or less than 100,000 coins, these low budget methods that we've been using all year trading with silvers is literally still the best way to go about it, especially during promos like Future Stars where we had a swaps program. I would imagine maybe an icon swaps if we're going to have icon swaps this year. Hopefully we do. And then maybe Foot Birthday. I would expect another sort of swaps program here in the next month or so. Um, and whenever we have swaps programs, we get those tokens via silver stars, and that brings gameplay demand and uh, more demand to the silver cards. And of course, there's always demand for silvers because of SBCs. So this is my favorite way to trade if you are on a low budget. Less than 100,000 coins, this is what you should do, or one of the things you could do. Go to Footbin or Footwiz, your whatever FIFA website you like the best. Sort by all the players, right? FIFA 23 players. We're going to go to version, and we're going to go to silver. We're going to go all silver, and all we're going to do is click on this this price right and that's going to sort from the most expensive card to the least expensive card in terms of silvers and we're going to look through these silvers in here and find some that sell for a couple thousand coins maybe not the ones that are like 5k because uh you know sometimes th those have too much competition on them and you can't get as good of sales but especially if you uh go through here and find somebody who's going for like two or three thousand coins right maybe this card right here a center back from the air busy from ajax right big club and you can tell that his card is usually selling for good amounts now he's probably up right now a bit more because of either a marquee matchups or uh, maybe the league sbcs right that's where i would be looking to trade on a low budget and this is the easiest way to find cards this will help you find cards and also help you find sniping filters if you notice in here like you might be like wow there's a lot of premier league uh goalkeepers or like a premier league center backs or maybe you know syria right backs right here both these guys are going for 3k so maybe silver syria right backs are selling for an increased amount right now that's where you can find really great filters to be sniping silvers on the game as well that's a great low budget method that's a good tried and true and tested now a new one that has kind of surfaced recently is trading with 82s. And this is going to be around for a while. This is something that you can do. Like, if you literally just don't know what to do on FIFA, just go bid on 82s. Because at least until this one SBC goes away, there are going to be there is going to be demand for 82s. The Future Stars Academy upgrade, which gives an 82 plus player pick, it's out for 24 more days. So it's out for like almost another month. So this will be pretty relevant for a long time. 82s are going to have demand this whole entire time because people will like to do an 82 plus player pick. Who cares about the objective Nuno Tavares that you get, right? And the other packs that you get are just kind of a bonus, but an 82 plus player pick every single promo that we have upcoming we think about road to the final we have full birthday i know people are going to want to do those player picks to try to get a promo card and to get good fodder uh and th this squad requires 82s right that is why there is a, a demand for 82s 82 rated squad 11 players so you can literally find 82s uh probably on the weekends during promo weekends for the next couple of weeks like all these guys are selling at inflated prices 82s are usually about what like 750 800 coins like minimum price and if you take a look at timo Werner, who is one of the cheapest 82s on the market he is 1.3 1.4k so these guys were earlier in the week down at a thousand coins flat you get some on bid for like 900 coins maybe a thousand coins you'll be able to list these guys up at like 1.4 to 1.7k and probably get some lazy sales and also just sell them at the cheapest price of what they're going for, and you're going to make some literally any time on this game. That is a great opportunity to make coins, especially if you're on a low budget or if you're just bored and you don't know what to do. Go bid on 82s, right? Especially on the weekends, right? The weekends where we have the most pack supply for promos, lightning rounds, and the like. So get on those bids there. And then, of course, we always have to talk about solutions and SBC trading, especially during promos like Future Stars where we have marquee matchups with tokens inside of them earlier this week when we had the um leipzig and union berlin a lot of bundesliga cards went up a bunch because there was more demand in here marquee matchups every week and sbcs like this are absolutely fantastic for gold rares non-rares from certain leagues and positions they spike in price especially on thursdays when this sbc is released and when we get challenge sbcs like these you know, cards go up in value for that as well. So just use Footbin to find anything that's expensive to try to trade with, like in terms of silvers and golds like that. The same thing I just showed you with silvers on Footbin, that works for bronzes, works for golds. It's a great idea and a great way to just find cards that are selling for a bit more. Now, speaking of SBCs again, if you're on a middle budget, let's say you've got over 100K now, you're like, Nate, what should I do? 150K, 
what should I be doing this time of the year to be making coins? SBC fodder, right? One thing we know about EA Sports is they are never going to change the fact that they will be trying to drain coins off of this game. SBC fodder will be, has been, um, and this is not going to change, right? This is going to be the best way to make coins on any budget, but specifically the middle budget, getting you from like 150k to like a million coins. SBC fodder is the way to do it, hands down. Now, I don't like to invest in fodder myself too much. It's not my most fun, my, my preferred way to trade, but it is the most efficient way to trade and the most successful way to trade. Now, fodder prices right now are up, but look at this DePaul's graph, right, all year long. You know, he goes one week from 3K up to about 5,000 coins, right? Then goes down to 3K again, boom, up to 6K. Right now, these guys are still a little bit inflated. They could go higher, of course, and it all depends on the week. But most weeks, you can buy these cards on Fridays late or Saturdays late and sell them on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, sometimes even Sunday and make a lot of coins. Now, the rating is what is key here, right? 85s earlier on this year didn't do that great, but 85s recently have been crazy, right? Remember when 85s were like six or seven K? Yeah, of course, no longer, right? These guys are 13,000 coins like every single week. Now, I do believe that fodder prices will still fluctuate and you have to be careful and it's all about timing, but most consistently, the timing has been you buy on Friday nights with a new promo supply with lightning rounds and then uh, or Saturday, and then you often have an opportunity to sell later in the week because on a Sunday or a Monday, we usually get an icon SBC or a player pick or something along those lines. These are the type of SBCs that make fodder move, the gamble packs, right? That's why 82s are up. This is a player pick. It's a gamble, right? People really want to do this sort of SBC, whether it's high rated fodder that you want to buy or it's low rated fodder. Fodder is the best way to make coins on a mid budget to get yourself, get yourself to a higher budget. And even in higher budgets, you can buy a lot of SBC fodder and make a lot of profit. It's all compounding. Again, like I mentioned, the more coins you have, the more you can invest if you want to. And then boom, you're going to end up making more coins because of that. So it's all about the SBCs uh, that require they give back a pack, basically a gamble. You know, a guy like this Taram or the Jovetic, these don't move fodder that much. Icon SBCs will move fodder too. Um, that's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, higher rated cards like 88s, 89s, 90s, 91s. These guys, when we start to get some really good prime icons, once again, it's been a minute since we've had icon SBCs, but I mean, you know, we had the team of the year icons and stuff. You know, if they drop new icons in the game, then uh, those will be very good to move the market via SBCs as well. Now, if you don't want to trade with fodder on the week, right, you could also invest in fodder long term with informs, 84 rated informs, 85 rated informs. You see my transfer list right now. I made an investment before team of the year started in 88 and 87 rated informs, especially a lot of these guys, right? Treore, Osaman, Ward, Prowse. I bought a bunch of these at like 19 to 20,000 coins. And I actually had like almost 70 plus of them on my transfer list. And I've sold about 50, I would say 45 to 50 of them just by lazy listing them. They never got to these prices like 39, 40,000 coins that I'm listing them up at. They never actually reached those prices and held them held there. But uh, they were selling at those prices because when at one point this James Ward Prowse card is who's right now about 26,000 coins, he was about 30k. And at that time, I was listing for 37, 38,000 coins. And I was getting sales because of lazy buyers uh, just going and needing an inform. So they go and search the market and buy the first one they see instead of searching for the lowest price. So always be listing this type of inform fodder. And you know, right now, I don't think informs are really that cheap to invest in, but the way to find where informs are at is go to this pop this page on Footbin, which if you need to link to this page, uh, I'll show you right now. You go to the top drop down with little SBC symbol, go to cheapest players by rating. So once you're in here, you can click on gold inform, click apply filters, scroll down until the rating of inform that you really want, which is probably, I wouldn't invest in any informs that are not 84 or above because anything that's 84 and below will be at discard value most of the time. Like it's you 84 informs or 11 K. So I would try to get these at discard. Um, and as you can see, some of these informs from earlier on this year, they have gone up in price, right? This was, you know, at 22,000 coins, this 84 Muriel at one point. And this is also a great shout. If you can pick up informs from earlier on in the year, um, at really, really low prices. Like remember that when this guy came out earlier on, 
he went to 20,000 coins, right? Well, now he's back down to 14K. If you can pick up out of packs in forums uh, for a low price, that's a re really, really good investment. But, you know, just take a look at these graphs. Like, I bought the 87s at 20K. You can see now all 87 in forums are about 27,000 coins. If these prices ever get back down to about 20,000 coins again, will I be interested in going back in? Yeah, because more SBCs will come out and it'll make these guys go up at some point. So, in form investing is more of a long term hold, especially if it's a discard investment. Investment. Stick to 83s and 84s for a discard in form investment, in my opinion, in regard to that. But that is the easiest way to make coins in this game. Just because EA is always putting out SBCs. And uh, you can trade with those fodder cards weekly. We talk about it weekly. We time it weekly every single uh, weekend on the YouTube video. So if you're not watching the YouTube channel, make sure you get involved there. Because we talk about the market every day. And we often talk about when to buy and sell fodder uh, every single week. So watch out for that. Now, if you're on a top tier budget, let's say you've got over a million coins. The best way to have fun and trade on this game, and I say have fun because I think it's the most fun way to trade in this game, is by trading with special cards. You can do fodder at the same time as this. It's one of the most optimal methods to trade in this game is to have investments in fodder or investments in something that are hopefully growing in value, but also trading fluctuation trading and i spend a lot of time talking about this every year but it's my favorite way to trade and it's the way that i've built up my coins to where i have built them up now perfect example right with this uh kavara dona card kavara dona was in future stars his card price has been moving around a lot on sunday night of this last week he was 560,000 coins i bought one there i sold them yesterday for 650k kind of where he is right now that's an example of a fluctuation trade knowing the market trends where you can buy a card for a low price and sell it on for a higher price later on. And this is really where the market is so great at this time of the year because so many promo cards have been released to now, right? Yeah, we've been able to trade all year with guys like Road to the Knockouts and maybe Winter Wild Cards now and the World Cup promos, right? We've traded with these guys so many times. I flipped uh, Militao, Hakimi, Kundes, right? I've, I've traded with these guys so many times because their prices are fluctuating day in and day out. But we have more and more promos, and especially as the days go on, as we get into this time of the year, uh, these cards continue to have great fluctuations, and they're still rare. And some of these guys are forgotten about, but some of these cards are still in demand every single day on this game, um, especially because like, if it's the only special card that somebody like Dalo maybe has, or the best version of him, you know, great, great cards to trade with. And this is the basics of fluctuation trading, right? I'm going to look for a card that I know is in demand that people use, uh, like this Dalo card, right? He has peaked in the past couple of days at like 216,000 coins. What was he on Monday? He was 197. He went all the way to 215. So like right now, he's 206. If I knew that this Dalo card, I could sell in the next day or two at around 220,000 coins, I'd be like, okay, let me try to get this card maybe on a bid or on a snipe around 200K. And that would enable me to hopefully sell it at 220 and I would make about... Uh, 10,000 coins after tax. This is where the tax calculation is really, really big and it's massive, right? So I see a Dalo here at 200. I see, oh, look, look, there's one on bid, 196. I'm going to add that to my targets. And again, since there's less competition around this time of the year, buying that card, um, you know, I probably will be able to sell it a little bit easier because this is a Manchester United card, uh, not that expensive. It has really good links, a lot of Man U cards in this game, Portugal links as well. And it's a World Cup card, so that has some added hype to it. And uh, it's the best version that he has in this game. So those are all things to consider when you're trading uh, with these types of cards. Like, Nate, who do I trade with to make coins? Well, pick cards that are popular, that are rare, and that are meta. And if you want to know what cards are popular, all you have to do is go to Footbin. And we look at this page all the time. But you go to the Players tab. You drop down to Popular. These are the players that people are searching up the most in FIFA right now at the moment. And so not all of them will be great to trade with, but it'll give you an idea of players that you see here consistently. Like this inform Teo Hernandez has been in the game since what, November? Yeah, November this guy's been in the game uh, since, and he's still on this page because he's one of the most used cards and hyped up cards right now in this game. So that's a great way to be fluctuation trading with cards. Now, again, as we mentioned, prices are probably gonna keep falling off during this part of the year as they usually do, but you can still trade in and out of fluctuations all the time on this game with icons, with special cards like the Dalo that we just looked at. And especially now with like Road to the Final and more promos coming out with live cards probably. That's another aspect of trading you can do. Live cards mean they get upgrades. Buying before they get the upgrades, selling uh, as they're about to or when their team or their player uh, performs and 
kind of reaches a threshold whereas today would get an upgrade so i'm gonna try to snag this dello here for 200k and then list them up for about like 217 to 220 and uh start making some coins because i'm motivated to trade it's this time of the year that i've made most of my coins it's a great time to trade and it's going to be a fun spring on fiba 23 especially if you're motivated at any time look back at this video get some ideas Think about it a little bit. Think about who you can maybe go out and trade with. And uh, let's get some coins for team of the season. That's kind of like an end goal for me right now is like, all right, I'm going to get some coins for team of the season. Whereas I know I'll be able to do a lot of upgrade packs there and pack some really end game and fun cards. Of course, we'll have fun along the way, but you got to have coins in this game to do anything. So if we're making coins, that's going to allow us to have more fun on this game. So if you enjoyed today's video, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. And to whoever outbid me on this Dello, I'll, I'll bid 202. I still think I can squeeze a 220 sale. So 202 is my max price. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Nate Foot Account. Catch you guys later. Peace. Out.